you for attending our panel talk study at this session three, introducing our degree program called International Master of Business Administration, in short we call IMBA. My name is Taso Kim, Senior Program Advisor, and I'll be your host today. Today, we have invited three other guests from IMBA program. So, can you please introduce yourself one by one? Hey, hello everyone. I'm Lei Li Nan. I'm the Assistant Professor of SIPS and uh, serving as the Academic Director of IMBA program. Uh, hi, my name is Joyce Du. I'm the assistant director as well as the admission officer of the IMBA degree program. Uh, hi, my name is Giles Mera. I'm a student from class 2020 of IMBA. Thank you all. Thank you all for attending this panel talk to share more detailed information and advice to our future MBA students. So my first question goes to Professor Lei. Professor Lei, as an academic director, can you please introduce MBA, MBA program to our future MBA students and what kind of core courses and what kind of academic knowledge our students can expect to gain? Okay, thank you, Dasa. I think our IMBA, IMBA program is designed for students who would like to get the systematic and comprehensive knowledge about the uh, management, especially in the international market. Uh, uh, I think if uh, you let me to summarize our program. Uh, I will uh, summarize it in three cross. Uh, the first one is cross discipline. Um, IMBA is not uh, like others uh, specific for human research management or the marketing management. Uh, within our program, students could benefit uh, the cross disciplinary and get more compre uh, comprehensive knowledge about international management. And the second one is, I think, is uh, about cross-border uh, communication with your classmates they from different industry. Uh, during, within the class or uh, after the class, you could have a lot of communication and uh, uh, discussion with your classmates to get such kind of cross-border uh, learning uh, from your classmates. The third one, I think, is about cross-cultural or cross-border. As different from the traditional MBA program, our IMBA program uh, provides the global classroom with the uh, for the Chinese students and the international students together. So during your study, uh, you could benefit from the cross-border uh, communication with your classmates, with your teachers, I think with also some uh, important famous guest, guest speakers. For the uh, core subjects, right? Uh, uh, our cost, uh, core subjects include uh, like the managerial economies, uh, strategic management, human resource management, marketing management, and a series some sub, uh, subject uh, courses uh, include our um, characteristics in the international management and the fintech. Yes, thank you. Wow, that's such a valuable information. And it seems like an MBA is a very professional degree, not only gaining uh, academic knowledge, but also gaining the network from the classmates from different backgrounds, and also nurturing their soft skills to become a global leader after their graduation. So I believe our students may be curious about the detailed course structure. So Joyce, as a program director, can you share more information about the course structure, credit systems, and other requirements for the students? Of course, uh, thank you, Dazo. So in terms of the credit system, we have 45 credit minimum requirement for the student to graduate, plus a thesis in the end of the year. The program lasts for two years for the full-time international student. And like Professor Lei just mentioned, we have a lot of across disciplinary subjects, across managerial economics, leadership, and organizational behavior, uh, microeconomics, business stats and analysis, and et cetera. Uh, so yeah, you are welcome to apply. And it's definitely a, a very comprehensive and cross disciplinary subjects to study for two years. Thank you. Thank you for the detailed information. Now I really want to hear the real experience of our IMBA students. Giles, 
can, can you share some of your stories, like how did you come across this IMBA program of Zhejiang University International Business School, and why did you happen to choose our, our degree program? Uh, well, for, for me, actually, the, it was introduced by a friend who is working at the university also. And uh, I've been looking for a program that, um, because currently we're doing part-time, uh, because I'm also working, uh, and I was looking for a program that actually manage my schedule because as you're working as well, you have to make sure you have the, the things. But even as a full time, uh, I think it's important that you, you go into um, an education that has a very strong, solid background and with uh, attached to what's going on currently in the business, in the industry. And uh, looking at the program and doing the overview uh, the program just fed perfectly for me, I think, and um, it helps me also to integrate what I'm learning with my work, which is which is fantastic. Oh, great! One more question to you then. Sure. So, after coming to our school and studying our degree program, what is the most surprising thing so far you have experienced from our school or degree program? Um, I think my my biggest surprise was how good. Uh, Zibs can actually integrate current uh, industry um, uh, business activities and technology that is happening right now, such as blockchain, the IoT. And I was very amazed by all the guests that we are having. I mean, we've got leaders of the industries, uh, uh, CEOs and VPs of top, uh, like Jili, uh, we had people from um, from Ali, Alipay. Uh, we have uh, a myriad of, of professionals give, giving their understanding of what's going on currently in the industries, uh, that it be in management, that it be in finance. And I think for uh, somebody who's looking for a, a master program, you really need to get something that helps you to do right now what you need is right now not something five years ago ten years ago yeah. you need to have current affair i think it's very important wow sounds like our mba students are gaining not only just uh, classroom lectures but also busy in and outside building up a network and then meeting such an industrial leaders so joyce as an academic uh, program director can you also share more information on the extracurricular activities like gila said attending a seminars or visiting the companies and so on uh, definitely so uh our management team put a lot of emphasis on the practical field of the IMBA degree program. So this year in 2020, we actually have structured two series of uh, forums. Uh, one is called Inside Salon, where students like Giles can invite speakers with uh, their interested areas of expertise uh, and talk about their experience and give students on some insight on that. Uh, another one is called Jingwen, which uh, is actually structured by Professor Lei. Uh, she has invited uh, a series of speakers this year as well as in the coming years. Uh, for example, one is uh, Ms. Zhang Aichun. She is the vice president of the Jili Group. Uh, she actually shared a lot of information on not just the start of the company, but also the experience of her entire personal life, which is quite inspiring. Well, great. Seems like our MBA, IMBA program is leveraging the network, not only from our faculty members' network, but also the students' self-network, because our MBA students are very professional, you know? They have their professional experience from their own industry, and I think that's a great initiative from our IMBA degree program. And I think not only these opportunities that our students can get, I think most of our future students may be interested in hearing more about the support that they can get from our program. So Professor Lei, can you share more information about the academic supports that our students can expect from our academic directors and professors? Okay, definitely. Uh, for, uh, for the academic side, I think our students could uh, 
gets the academic support uh, within or during the class and after the class, uh, especially uh, as we've just uh, mentioned that MBA program, it has some opportunity to uh, get in touch with the uh, practical business activities. So uh, the professors, uh, could give you uh, the analy analytical tools how to use the theory or analytical knowledge uh, to use the uh, real business activities. Uh, and I think, uh, uh, include me, uh, both our staffs and uh, academic professors, uh, all of us are very delighted to discuss with the students uh, in and after the class, especially uh, I think from the our uh, final thesis preparation, uh, students could have a lot of discussion with their supervisors wow, yeah, to get amazing. a lot of suggestions, yeah. Oh, great. So Joyce, then can you add some few more words on the career supports that our students can expect to get? Uh, of course. So uh, in terms of the career support, we are having a lot of uh, actually industrial mentors. So for the career part, uh, this year we are planning to allocating each of our IMBA student a industrial mentor. Uh, those mentors are allocated in terms of categories across FinTech, international business, management, uh, manufacturing, and et cetera, which are tailored to our students' profile. Uh, in terms of the purpose, we are trying to uh, let the the leaders to give our students some guideline and specific goals for their future in the coming years. Thank you. Seems like our academic directors and program directors are doing their best to support their students in the academic wise and career wise as well. But I believe there are some still some challenges that our students are facing. So Giles, can you share, you know, as you said, you are a part-time MBA student, mm -hmm. managing both of your career life and study life. There definitely might be some challenge that you have been facing, and how did you overcome or overcoming so far? Well, I, I think uh, for, for this one, what's very important is you have to manage your time properly, and you have to know, uh, you know, and how to study, to plan for your studies, as you're doing so that you have the time to study the materials, to review what you need, to prepare for the classes, uh, to have the group discussion with uh, your classmates. Uh, we do uh, things such as going on uh, Ding Talk or use the WeChat. Those are some of the apps we use here in China uh, to help us communicate uh, outside of class. And we also use um, you know, uh, things uh, such as um, time management to be able to, to manage the work because everybody working sometimes, uh, you know, a lot of us also are managers and professional in our line of work and we can be quite busy as well. So sometimes we have to set time for work, sometimes we have to set time for the studies. And for me, uh, my studies was usually, it's usually done in the evening. I do a lot of more studies in the evening uh, read materials, uh, go over journals to look at uh, the materials, and uh, that's that's the challenge for the time for for me for the time. And I think if you're enrolled in the uh, full time program, it's be a bit easier for that because you don't have to do the work. So you'll have more time during the day to handle uh, your classes, to handle the work, and you can have a bit more activities uh on campus in the evening for you to enjoy a little bit some of the activities going to cafes meeting with some of the new friends yeah. uh and um some of the things we, we also do here to uh to do from uh, some of the challenges uh, because as an international program some of the challenges could be communication especially from cross culture and what we've done in my class uh, is that every Saturday when we meet here at the university, we reserve in the evening times for us to have group discussions. So it's though everybody in the classroom is uh, from the classmates are invited to come and we discuss about um, different topics, usually business topics related to the current industry topics, uh, the personal opinions of each of our classmates in their field and we even uh, talk about what kind of possible business we can do actually for the future, perhaps together. Cool. <laughs> so, 
those are some of the things we do to uh, meet the challenge of communication, meet the challenge of uh, time demanding. Wow, that's really sounds intense, but it, the time management is, is really important, yes. So I'm really getting more curious about your daily life, actually. So how's your week generally look like, and what are you up to these days, Monday, the weekends? Well, uh, Monday's work time. <laughs> 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 so go, go to work. Um, as, as you know, I'm actually also a, a teacher at another university, and um, for me it's important to upgrade my education, to upgrade... Uh, the learning to understand new techniques to understand new ways so and doing this basically i can i can work so uh usually during the weekdays i will have classes and uh since we're also a little bit short due to covid 19 of teachers like every university experience the same issues so i do have a little bit of lo a higher load of classes mm -hmm. and uh, i do also part-time so during the week usually i'm quite busy with the classes uh, in the evening, I do a lot of the studies, especially uh, we're studying Chinese, which is a little bit challenging for me <laughs> because uh, the characters, it's a little bit difficult for me to remember the characters. So I do a little bit more uh, study on the, on the Chinese. Uh, and uh, so that's usually my, my week, usually. Of course, I have a family, so I have to take care of, so uh, take time with my family, with my daughter, my wife. Uh, and uh, on weekends, uh, usually every other weekends or sometimes every other every weekends we will come here so on Thursday I come uh, prepare for the next day and then we start bright and shiny at 9 a.m. and uh, we have classes in the morning we have classes in the afternoon and we have classes in the evening but that's because we have the intense program since we do the part-time luckily uh, this coming week and the next time we don't we don't have the evening classes <laughs> So it's a little bit better for us <laughs> in that case. And uh, uh, that's usually, and then also we meet with the classmates. We do have dinners together. Mm -hmm. We try to do activities after the class, even if it's a bit late, and try to, uh, to experience each other, to, to go to things. So uh, it's, it's a very um, challenging in terms of time, but I really enjoy it very much. Every minute that I'm doing, I enjoy. So. I think that's the part of something. You really have to enjoy what you're doing. And learning here is brings such great experience to me, at least personally. Mm -hmm. And having the opportunity to meet with uh, so many great people, uh, not only our teachers, we, we have a fantastic uh, background and, and really strong uh, uh, tec technical and understanding. But as well with our classmates, we also have uh, an amazing uh, amazing ideas, amazing perspective in, in their field of industry. Well, great. Sounds like it's a very packed day and packed week, but I believe it's worth it. So Absolutely. Yeah. Before we move on to our admissions process questions, there is one important thing that we have to make sure about the thesis. So, Professor Lei, so this is something very challenging but inevitable for all of our students. So can you please share more information about thesis preparation process to our future MBA students? Okay, um, I think uh, it is a critical question and it's also a challenge for all the students. Uh, for the thesis, uh, as we know, it's uh, one important thing that you need to prepare before your graduation get our degree. So uh, in the uh, second semester of your second year, uh, we will st start the thesis preparation work. So uh, you will have the opportunity to uh, select your supervisors and to confirm the topic of your final thesis. And uh, after you uh, submit the proposal of your thesis, you have about uh, six to nine months to um, prepare your thesis uh, before submission, and we uh, will organize the uh, double blinded review for your work and uh, to see whether uh, your your work is you could be uh, certificated uh, as the, uh, to, uh, for the degree. Yes. I see. 
So can students write a thesis in both Chinese or in English? Can they choose? Yeah, both languages is, uh, is allowed. And uh, um, I think uh, for uh, most uh, international students, they would like to uh, write it in English, yeah. That sounds great. And it's fairly well structured. I know it's very critical thing and, and it's very difficult process, but with the help of our academic directors and professors, and our program directors, I believe students can make it through it. Right, Jill, Giles? Yeah. <laughs> actually, for, for, for the thesis, uh, actually, for, for the thesis, I already are uh, contemplating a subject of what you do for, for the thesis. So I've got a couple of subjects in mind that I'll be interested in uh, going over and uh, maybe have a chance to discuss with some of the teachers about that. Wow, early <laughs> bird. <laughs> well, you know, a, a thesis, the problem with the thesis, it takes really a, a long time actually to choose a really good topic and something that you can be very excited about. Exactly. And if I can... I suggest to the other students is to really actually you should try to uh, find your topic as early as possible. Don't wait until the second year or second term. You should start thinking already from the, from the beginning, I think, and get ideas from your classes that you're having on some topics that can be interesting to talk about. Definitely, definitely. As one of, I was also one of the international students studying at here, Zhejiang University International Campus, and I personally very much enjoyed the thesis process because they, our professors were very flexible enough to let me choose the topic that I'm interested in. So I literally enjoy the research itself. So good luck for your future thesis. Thank you. <laughs> And now let's move on to our admissions process. Our admissions application for 2021 enrollment is already open. So I believe it's a very important moment for our future MBA students to prepare their required document and go through all the application process. But don't worry, our pro program directors and all of our staff members are here to assist you. So Joyce, as a program director, can you also share more detailed information on the admissions process and also share some tips and advice for a successful admission? Uh, absolutely. Thank you, Dazo, for passing on the admission questions. Uh, so this year's application system has been open since December 2020. And from now on to April, we are accepting applicants on a rolling basis. So one of the tips that I would also suggest is to apply as soon as possible as we give the higher chances to the early student that admitted in. Um, so another tips is for uh, students who have been working experience. We, uh, we now have less strict uh, in terms of the length of your working experience so if your background is strong enough we would also consider that in terms of the evaluation after we are screening your application stage we would uh, structure interview and we will invite you through the mid of every month and hopefully we should give you a admitted result by the end of the month and you should able to have the result by the end of july uh, so yeah that's all thank you thank you then there is one more important question left to Joyce that I get a lot of questions about the scholarship. Any scholarship available? Uh, so in terms of these questions, uh, for the Chinese government scholarships, given the professional and business nature of the program, the tuition fee is quite high. So usually the Chinese government scholarship cannot cover that. But uh, we are happy to accept students who having scholarship from their own national country, that's possible. Another one is that we offer entrance scholarship for the first year of, of our excellent student in, in terms of their merit, but it's only a small fraction of the entire tuition fees. Thank you. Yeah, but I believe that the investment is much more worth it and I have a great turnout. So Giles, as uh, our previous applicant who went through all these application process and then got successfully admitted to our program. Do you have any advice you can share to our future MBA students? Um, well, I think it's very important first is be natural, be yourself, uh, you know, and uh, share your own experience. Everybody has a unique experience. And who makes you is what we're, uh, I think the university, is uh, the university is looking for. They're looking for individuality. They're looking for uh, new way of thinking, new understanding. So uh, 
it doesn't really matter as much uh, about your background as long as you've got an interesting uh, aspect of yourself, I think, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, for, for me, because from my background, it's, of course, I've got business background as well. I've done business before. But uh, if I was looking at what I'm doing right now, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit different. But at the same time, I think it's also what makes me a little bit special because I have uh, a different way of looking at things. And so that through my experience, I think it's important to show who you are, to, uh, to be energetic, be really energetic, that's very important. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think that's, that's the key, I think, aspect. Thank you for a great advice. So I'll, before we close this panel talk, I'll leave our last question to the Professor Lei. So are there any advice that you can give to your future MBA students? Well, future MBA student, uh, I think uh, beyond the knowledge you learned from our program, uh, I do hope that you could get um, a systematic, rational, and a critical thinking mindset from the program. And I do hope all of you become the elite in the global, in the international management field. Thank you. Thank you all for spending your time and then attending to this panel talk to share such a valuable information and advice to our future MBA students. And thank you all of you watching this panel talk and get more information from our MBA and showing us such a great interest in our MBA degree program. Feel free to reach us out to our academic director and program directors. You can find their contact information in our official website, or you can even search Zhejiang University International Business School at our Facebook and send their direct message. Our admissions team will reply to you shortly. Thank you again, all attending for this, and then hope to see you all back in this campus very soon. Thank you, bye-bye.